guys, welcome to Priceless B Movies. I'm your host, Colin Price, and now this is a really special day. So there's this movie, right? And it's directed by Sam Raimi, you know, the guy who did, you know, the Evil Dead movies and Drag Me to Hell and the original Spider-Man trilogy, you know, great director, a lot of artistic vision. And it uh, stars Liam Neeson and Francis McDormand, two incredible actors who are always, just always give their A game no matter what they're doing. And the music is done by Danny Elfman. I mean, come on, in all the Tim Burton movies, the Simpsons theme, for crying out loud. This is sure to be a wonderful, smart, thought-provoking, intelligent movie with a real great social message, right? Let's take a look, huh? Mark. Circus freak? Is that it? Is that it? Some kind of a freak? Me, I should be wearing a funny little hat. Do you like it? Yeah? Yeah? Pay the dancing freak. Pay five bucks. This is the dancing freak. Only five bucks to see the dancing freak. The fuck? Dark Man. Dark Man, as I said, stars Liam Neeson. He's a scientist. He's a very smart guy. He's very good. Kind of a nerd. And uh, he's working on this kind of synthetic skin that can be used on burn victims. Basically, you know, if you've had so much burnt off of you, you can work the stuff on, almost like latex, and it'll work. It'll basically give you a face again. Which is a great idea, except he cannot figure out how to make this stuff last for more than, I think, something like 90 minutes before it just breaks down and melts off. So he's just going crazy trying to figure out how to make this synthetic skin work. And at the same time, there's a group of criminals led by Larry Drake, the guy from Dr. Giggles. And uh, he, th this gang, they think that Liam Neeson has something they want, and they break into his lab, and they fuck him up, and they blow up the lab, and Liam Neeson survives, but he survives with only, like, a good 26% of his face still on. It's a pretty gruesome kind of Freddy krueger sight now that they're done with him. Thank God, though, that he, you know, happened to be working on synthetic skin for burn victims, right? Except he still can't get past that 90-minute mark. What he can do, though, is for 90 minutes, look like anybody. He decides to take this knowledge and his invention and basically turn the gang against itself. So this is kind of a cross between Batman, the Phantom of the Opera, and Punisher. Interesting enough. It's interesting that these days the big talk is about uh, Deadpool. You know, that's the big comic book movie no one will shut up about. And what's really ironic is if you think about it, and especially if you've seen Darkman, Deadpool owes a lot to Darkman. There's a lot of very similar themes and ideas, and even the plot structure is very similar. Right down to, you know, the scene where he's all disfigured and he sees his girl and he tries to go up to her and he can't talk to her because of how he looks. You know, that shit in Deadpool is right out of Darkman, whether it was intended or not. And the thing about Darkman that I love is, at least to the best of my knowledge, it was an original character, an original movie. This wasn't based on anything. This wasn't a book or a comic or a cartoon or anything before it was a movie. And I think that that kind of separates it from other superhero stories. Liam Neeson is incredible in this movie because he has to play so many emotions. And the thing about Darkman, once he's disfigured, it also kind of affects his mind. And, you know, he goes kind of crazy in a couple of scenes, as you saw at the beginning of this review. But Liam Neeson plays this stuff so well, you really believe this guy's out of his mind. You really believe that as much as you want to root for him and as much as you want him to get back to these people, that he's not exactly okay himself like 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 that he understands that getting revenge is not going to help him he just does it because he feels it's something he has to do equally as impressive as Frances McDormand although in this movie unlike a lot of movies she did prior and after this one she really is kind of the damsel in distress she she has some great scenes but she is kind of one-dimensional I do wish that they had let her do more an actress of her caliber should never have to just be the girl screaming for help who really steals the show, however, is Larry Drake. Let's face it, the guy steals the show anytime he's the bad guy. And his character, Robert G. Durant, is one of the top 
criminal characters of the 90s. I don't care what anyone says. You could write a whole trilogy of movies just around this guy. He's far more interesting than your run-of-the-mill villain. And the thing is, he's not even the main villain in this movie. He's just far more interesting than the main villain of this movie. Speaking of the main villain, Colin Friels does an okay job, but kind of like Francis McDormand, uh, he doesn't have a lot to do. He's there to be the bad guy. This whole movie really is... Liam Neeson is this full character that you can get into and get invested in. Um, Larry Drake is his nemesis, his personal nemesis, and you can't really feel, you know, that you can't really feel that level of intensity between Liam Neeson and Colin Friels, because even though Colin Friels is the main bad guy, they don't know each other until the very end of this movie. It seems like a much more personal conflict between uh, Darkman and between Durant. So... I really do feel like the movie almost didn't even need Colin Friels. It almost didn't need that character. I'm glad that he's in it, and there's it, and the film ends with this great fight between Liam Neeson and Colin Friels at this construction site, and it's fantastic to watch, especially with the budget they had and the fact that this was the early 90s. But you don't really need him. Ted Raimi, Sam's little brother, and Nicholas Wirth both also do very well. They're two members of the gang. They're the only two members of the gang other than Larry Drake that I feel are worth mentioning. Um, this movie, even though it's a superhero movie, it's also, like I said, it's not based, it's not a Marvel character. It's not a DC character. You don't have to put up with any of that bullshit before you go see this movie. Um, but because of that, too, uh, you should take this movie's R rating very seriously. Uh, this is a very intense, very violent movie. This is one of those movies where after the first scene where Larry Drake uh, and his men shoot up a warehouse, grab this one guy, and Larry Drake starts cutting his fingers off with a cigar cutter. That's the first scene in this movie, and it really sets up the tone of this movie very well. This is an action movie. There's a lot of fun to be had with it, but it's a violent movie, and you should know that before going in. This is nothing to show your children. Look, I'm just going to come on and say it. I I love Dark Man. This is one of those movies that I saw a long time ago and I've seen many, many times since then. I'm going to give Dark Man three and a half stars. It's not quite up there at a four star level. There are some faults in the effects and uh, you know, some of the dubbing here and there doesn't really work. But they're minor technical flaws, I think. I think if you watch this movie and remember that this was made for next to nothing in 1990, this is pretty damn good for what it is. That's my review of Darkman. Stay tuned. I've got a lot more reviews coming. Also, and as always, if there's a movie you can think of that's either overlooked or underappreciated by mainstream critics, audiences, or both, and you'd like to know what I think about it, let me know in the comment section below and I'll see what I can do about finding a copy of that movie and putting up a review for you. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more Priceless B-Movies.